Today is gonna be an interesting video because we don't have any super massive news to talk about, but Noah Syndergaard, AKA Thor, he is going to the Dodgers. And what do we know about the Dodgers? They always seem to fix pitchers and Noah Syndergaard is in need of fixing. We also have a trade between the Brewers and the Guardians. We'll talk about that as well as the Blue Jays. They acquired Kevin Kiermaier, the Tigers, they picked up two different pitchers. And then also we have to talk about the Cubs because I don't know what the Cubs are doing. So make sure you stay until the end. We'll talk about that. Now we do have some breaking news and it's pretty bad. If you're a Red Sox fan, just know I'm sending you virtual hugs. You have released Jeter Downs, who was one of the bigger prospects in that Mookie Betts trade, and I thought that he was going to be really good. Now, he did have an insane strikeout issue, but I thought maybe the Red Sox, they could mold this young man, and he could perform better as a big leaguer. No, no, he struck out a lot, and it sucks because he genuinely looked like Mookie Betts. The swing, the follow-through, the fact that he was a versatile defender, I thought that Jeter Downs was going to be it, but uh, unfortunately, this Mookie Betts trade is turning out to be one of the worst in history. So Noah Syndergaard is going to the Dodgers and a lot of people are under the impression that Noah Syndergaard is this old decrepit pitcher. He's not even 31 years old yet. Now, the thing about Noah Syndergaard that you have to keep in mind, this was 2019, right before he had Tommy John surgery. He was the top 3% in fastball velocity, the average exit velocity. So every time that he was giving up base hits, he was missing barrels. But in 2022, of course, we have to kind of cut him some slack because he, he just came off Tommy John surgery. I don't think that he's at 100%, but going into 2023, I think that he's going to be closer to 100%. And with the Dodgers pitching staff, aka Mark Pryor, the fact that the Dodgers gave Tyler Anderson $8 million, Andrew Heaney $8.5 million, and just a year later after Mark Pryor and the Dodgers pitching staff got a fix on them, Anderson signed three years for $39 million. Heaney signed for two years, $25 million. The Mark Pryor effect is real. If you have no idea who Mark Pryor is, he is a former all-star pitcher. He had a pretty good prime back with the Cubs and other teams. So Mark Pryor has been doing wonders, and I fully expect Noah Syndergaard not to be able to repeat what he did back in 2019, 2018, when he was a legitimate superstar pitcher. So in the title, I'll probably say the Dodgers signed a former star superstar. Yeah, Noah Syndergaard back in the day, he was him. From from his rookie season to 2019, right before he had Tommy John surgery, he had a combined 3.31 ERA, a 2.92 FIP, which is elite. He basically had a 10 strikeouts per nine. I mean, from 2016 to 2018 alone, he had a 2.81 ERA in almost 400 innings, and he had a crazy low 2.42 FIP. That is just a stat. If you took all of the infielders and outfielders out of the equation, how good is a pitcher by himself? I mean, he was... He was one of the best. Again, if we take a look at Tyler Anderson in 2022, there is a lot of red circles. He was missing barrels. And if we take a look at Andrew Heaney, sort of the same. No, actually, he was, when people were making contact, they were barreling baseballs up, but he was really good at striking guys out. His spin was up. The chase rate was up. So that's what the Dodgers do. They just fix you somehow. They... They turn you into a beast. One trade I do want to talk about, a lot of you probably won't care, but the Brewers have acquired infielder Owen Miller from the Guardians in exchange for a player to be named later. And the last time that Cleveland and Milwaukee made a trade and there was a player to be named later in the trade, we got Michael Brantley out of it. Now, this was back in 2008. So obviously, we're going back a few years, but Michael Brantley came out of that deal. So I really hope that Owen Miller has a fantastic next few years with the Brewers. He had an 89 OPS plus. He had a bunch of doubles. I think he had 26 doubles in 130 games, but he wasn't that great. And defensively, I'm not going to lie to you guys, he's pretty terrible. So before we break down the Cubs offseason, again, I do have to remind you guys of a few other transactions. The Blue Jays have acquired Kevin Kiermaier. Kevin Kiermaier, we all know, is one of the best defensive outfielders in the history of baseball. That is not being dramatic. That is not hyperbole. Kevin Kiermaier defensively is one of the best that we've ever seen. Offensively, obviously, there's some question marks going into his age 30 plus season. I can't remember how old exactly Kevin Kiermaier is, but I feel like that's a decent signing. The Blue Jays, they were trying to skate by with Bradley Zimmer and Ramel Tapia and all the other guys they had in center field. So now that Teoscar Hernandez is gone, maybe George Springer goes to right field and then you have Kevin Kiermaier manning center field again. You're probably expecting an 80 to 85 OPS plus player, but defensively, he's about as good as you can find in the free agency pool. The Tigers have acquired two different starting pitchers, so they acquired Mike Michael Lorenzen, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. I am not the biggest believer in Michael Lorenzen, but they gave him one year, $9 million. We can see that last year for the Angels, he made 18 starts, almost 100 innings, and he had a 4.24 ERA, so he's all right. He throws really hard. And the Tigers, they bring back one of their former pitchers. He will make $10 million with a $1 million performance bonus pool available to him. 
$10 million is a lot of money for a guy that was injured a lot last year and not very good. But I guess you can see back in 2019, he was striking out 30.2% of the hitters that he was facing, which was top 10 among qualified pitchers. So Matthew Boyd, if he's healthy, I mean, I guess that's the biggest question with Detroit pitching. Are they going to be healthy? We saw so many pitchers go down for them last year. You're kind of crossing your fingers. Speaking of crossing your fingers, the Guardians have signed Mike Zunino. Thank you. God, Austin Hedges is going to be gone. Now, the only reason why I'm excited about this is because we have a young catcher named Bo Naylor. Yes, that is the brother of Josh Naylor. He is a left-handed hitter, and I really feel like he could struggle in his rookie season against lefties. So now they're probably going to go with a platoon of Bo Naylor and Mike Zunino, Zunino versus lefties, and he just underwent successful surgery. So he was terrible in 2022, but that was because he had thoracic outlet syndrome. They fixed that, and check out these stats. Look at the platoon splits for Mike Zunino in 2022. And 114 at bats against lefties. He had 16 home runs, a 342 batting average. He had a 420 on base percentage and a near 1300 OPS. And again, I'm only caring about his lefty stats. He was atrocious against righties, but at least the power was still there. I mean, he was all right. But considering we have been employing the worst offensive player in the history of baseball, yes, I'm saying it right now. Austin Hedges almost has 2,000 at bats. He's hitting a career 189 with a 58 OPS plus you're looking at the worst offensive player in the history of our beautiful game defensively he's cool he's a nice guy off the field but wow, he swings a wet noodle. And then last but not least, I do want to talk about the Cubs bringing in right-handed reliever Brad Boxberger to a one-year deal. He was pretty impressive last year. He had a 2.95 ERA and 68 strikeouts in 64 innings. So he was pretty good. Now, the only thing I will say, his strikeout numbers were down and his walks were up. So at the ripe age of he will be 35 once the season starts, I don't think that he's going to be the best pitcher in baseball, at least relief pitcher, but he's an addition that I think the Cubs will make better. Now, the Cubs really haven't had too many additions, and they're getting beat out by everyone. I fully expected the Cubs to really retool and rebuild really hard this offseason, but they're not really doing that. Yes, they picked up Cody Bellinger. They spent money on Jamison Tyon and Brad Boxberger, but they've lost a lot of guys. I didn't realize that they outrighted Framil Reyes. I thought that he was decent for them. Wade Miley became a free agent. Wilson Contreras, obviously, he has left to the Cardinals. So in my opinion, the Cubs are one of those teams that aren't doing a whole lot to get better, but all of the big rumors are saying that the Cubs are in on this player, the Cubs are in on that player. It's just they're not really able to capitalize and make that deal finalized. They couldn't get Carlos Correa, so Hopefully now they can really hone in on Dansby Swanson. He will be their starting shortstop. You can move Nico Horner to third base or second base. I've been hearing some rumbling that it could be an opening day infield of Justin Turner at third base, Dansby Swanson at shortstop, and Nico Horner at second base. That's pretty good. 